Hi everybody, I just made my own omelet and some hash browns. And I show I showed y'all how to make these hash browns just like they do in the Waffle House on my other channel. And I'm gonna leave a link to that video in my description box. If you like what you see over there, y'all subscribe over there. And if y'all already hadn't subscribed over here, please do so. Thank you. I appreciate everybody that wrote to me and wanted to see what was going on with me. Wasn't nothing going on with me, y'all. I just took a break. So, <laughs> pal, you can't be taking no break. Mm -hmm. I'm filming with my camera phone right now. And I'm listening to some of the news reports about what's going on with Donald Jr. And so you may hear some of that in the background. Hmm. Um, he didn't know where it would turn out to be, it would be the information was reliable, and on and on and on. It doesn't appear that there's a certain degree of salsa. I made that myself too. It's just lemons in there. Come on, them a little bit of packages that you pour in your water for flavor. If you're hungry and you want some breakfast, get you a regular potato, grate it up, and make your own hash brown. And like I said, I'll show you how to do that at the bottom of my description box. Omelet. Hmm. Omelet. 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 Look at that. That's cheese, honey. Hang hanging like that. Honey, I ain't got nothing to come in. I'm just going to sit back and see what color the wall is going to be, honey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a line from color purple. Mm -hmm. Just going to wait and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Right there. The situation. 
Mm-hmm. With our government officials. And this is the first time that I'm filming with this particular phone. I hope you like it. Since I was being missed, I think let me go and eat breakfast with, with my beautiful people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been bike riding this morning. While I was out, I picked up some eggs, picked up some uh, potatoes, and some light bread. I had onions already here. And the meat that I wanted to put in it. So many folks ain't buying it. Which is 11. We used that line on Monday, and you know, it was sort of mild. Yeah, I, 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 I,
four million viewers. You barely about eight hundred thousand. But I think it's funny that you have enough time in the White House, which is apparently you're so busy, you're able to sit around reading Yoki numbers. No, well, I have a really okay. good press for my team, so the White House press team is superb. You know, I don't deal with this stuff because I, I do have a day job. So last night, Donald Trump Jr. said two contradictory things. First, he said that, that people were trying to reach out all the time during the campaign with things like this, information like this, which something many historians have said that this happens all the time. And then he also said that no one else at any time during the campaign reached out saying they had information about Hillary Clinton. So which is it? Did it happen all the time, or did it never happen? I will refer to what the president and all Trump Jr. and also Jay Sekulow said. But in the heat of the campaign, he took a meeting as a favor to an acquaintance. That meeting was told to him on false pretenses, and as soon as it was clear that that was the case, it ended. Right, but, uh, but the surrogate was saying it happened all the time. He said it happened all the time, but then he also said last night, it's the only time it ever happened. I'm just trying to get a straight answer. You have to ask him. I didn't want to say that. Fair enough. Lindsey Graham asked Chris Ray, the president's nominee for FBI director, whether it was appropriate for Donald Trump Jr. to take the meeting, and if he should have alerted the FBI, listen, this is what he said in terms of that interview. You know, at the end of this, if I got a call from somebody saying the Russian government wants to help Lindsey Graham get re-elected, they got dirt on Lindsey Graham's opponent, should I take that meeting? Well, Senator, I would think you'd want to consult with some good legal advisors before you did that. So the answer is, should I call the FBI? I think it would be wise to let the FBI know. The the FBI about. So here's what I want you to tell every politician. If you get a call from somebody suggesting that a foreign government wants to help you by disparaging your opponent, tell us all to call the FBI. Hmm. To the members of this committee, any threat or effort well, to use a gram. Let you know. from any nation state or any non-state actor is the kind of thing the FBI would want to know. Is that Graham right so, there? Is he the bum? The preacher? This is something that Donald Trump Jr. should be holding this preacher? Kind of house preacher? This is Graham on the point of house preacher, wasn't he? I don't know what I heard. I heard about him, but I ain't watching him. If that's the same man, he used to dig in them folks' pockets, y'all. Watching all this stuff. Make you want to never write nothing down in an email. For you said that? That's what email is for. But, huh? Put down the bare minimum. What you say is. Hey, y'all, when we get together. And then call them. And we need to tell about when you don't get together, where you don't get together, and what you didn't make ever about. Mm hmm. Because I always say, don't write nothing down. Mm hmm. continues and will continue to exist 
Iraq. How does that the phone the tap. Then maybe you can talk. Look, it is a massive event, you're right, uh, because this isn't just the second biggest city in the world. Oh, now they're talking about it's also the city that subpoena the records uh, ISIS, the of Donald's phone. The so CD. He called right. and talked to them folks before they had to meet. Yes, Child. Kinetic, so it's about some more me dribble out. Who knows? Say what you want. Just listen to them. We got to have an opinion. Listen to both sides. Mm -hmm. And then, as you heard both sides, you know the truth. Might not want to admit it, but omit it. Mm -hmm. Right, in breakfast with Bell. Mm -hmm. See what I do. I like on YouTube, you know. Like I have now. And I'll turn on YouTube and see what they're talking about for the day. And then just let it play. Then you hear everybody's opinion because YouTube have a way of putting the conversation and lining up. Even the comedians come up when they be talking about it. So you hear everybody what everybody's saying about it. Honey. Some of them comedians had me cracking up. Shy. <laughs> they be going in. You hear me? Come on, tearing somebody ass out the frame. They know how to do it. Mm. Well, you believe it real or it's fake? You're damn so funny. <laughs> I didn't say it. Mm -hmm. Okay, here come another one up. The Dan titled that one. Six months of lies. That was the last one. This is something else I know. This is old news, don't y'all? That's old news. Them folks ain't even revelant. Revelant. Mm -hmm. Just play some out of grandma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I can see somebody with a grandpa too. Well, it seems like all these leaks occur and things the bad news occurs when the president has a great State of the Union speech, something back in the media. Remember when we talk about the phone? Try to keep them revving up. Not even revving up. Mm-hmm. And here we have another trip come back. They did a speech today. Who cares? They're not that's why I don't buy this video. I'm going bring up them other folks. I don't know about y'all. But them folks ain't reveling. Mm -hmm. Not to me. I'm not to a lot of folks. Who cares? By them. They're not affecting our world. What's going on now, you know? It's good. Campaign of it's very Trump, feeling. Unfortunately, is putting out there to distract from their own problems. Uh, the Clinton campaign never interfaced with anybody from over there. Yeah. The, DNC, the DNC is out today denying it. Uh, there's some rumor of some contractor at some point having a conversation with somebody at the Ukrainian embassy. The DNC is out there today saying we never accepted, received, asked for any opposition research about calling that for. And the I'll tell you what, when there's, why would, why when there's, there's, a, when there's an email chain between Chelsea Clinton, Laura Adigan, and John Podesta, Accepting the offer of awful research on uh, Donald Trump from a geopolitical foe like Russia? That, that would be the question. I beg the question. If this is from a geopolitical, this is from a Russian lawyer. We don't have anything beyond that. <laughs> we don't have anything beyond that. Here's, here's the part that is uh, on your Donald, She's a Russian lawyer. Okay, she's a Russian lawyer. Donald Trump Jr. accepted the meeting under the pretense, under the offer that she had awful research on the opponent. So whether she did or not, and I don't know why anybody would believe Donald Trump Jr. at this point because he's done nothing but lie about this for the last six months, but whether you believe him or not, what you cannot argue with is that the offer that was made to him and that he gleefully accepted that if this is what you're talking about, I love it, was that that Russian lawyer was going to give him awful research on his wife, on his father's opponent. She's a Russian lawyer, we know that. And she, she, she said, I may have incriminating evidence uh, uh, on some illegal contribution. And, and let me just tell you, let, let's take, if you go back in time and think about this, in June of this year, June 20th of, mm -hmm. of that year was taking place. The Trump campaign wasn't worth, Russia was nowhere on the horizon. Let's just remember that, okay? Russia was as a campaign. Yeah, nowhere on the horizon of this campaign. No, no, yeah, I was in all the campaign. A couple of weeks later, they were changing the platform at the AOC convention. Mike, 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 I was there. What we are concerned about during that period of time was a contested convention on, on the floor. Contested on the floor. There was no talk They're about it. They're scrambling around, around trying to so save him. It's easy in retrospect that Hunter must be in trouble. Must be in trouble. Mm. And he said, I love it. 
So, I mean, I, I, I was explaining how I, I was explaining the defense of Donald Trump Jr., which, you know, this is the right thing to do. I think you know, the crawl, make sure there's a big crawl at the bottom. But I mean, he's taking a lot of heat right now, and understandably because he was the least discreet on that email thread. But you know, he's getting passed over and is not getting anywhere. Okay, he released all the email. Well, that one, anyway. Not being him. They would have subpoenaed the email. Maybe his lawyer could have said, I object to certain parts of it. And could have had it stretched out. But he just gave away the whole, the whole thing. Is that smart? Even though he thought the, the New Yorker was going to um, publish it anyway. Hello. Why are you telling yourself? when they said most of their money came from Russia. Because I'm like, y'all tell me yourself. Why would you say that? People that do wrong, they think everybody do it. Think about it like this. People that smoke weed, they think everybody smoke weed. So what they do, they be around some folks at a party, whatever, at a barbecue. They pull out their stuff and start rolling or just pull it out and light it. Like everybody do it. And you got to tell them, hey, hey, hey. Go out with that. Away from over here, away from the public. Go by the trees, the woods, somewhere, and then come back. Because you do that, don't mean everybody do it. People that smoke used to do that too. Mm -hmm. uh, they yeah, put whip out them cigarettes anywhere, anytime, any place. Mm -hmm. Light it in your house and then say, Do you have an ashtray? What you say? Mm -hmm. Then you got butts all in your yard. Mm -hmm. Mm-mm. <laughs> Child. I'm going to say about drinking, too. I got some beer in my trunk. Hot. <laughs> Won't go. Yeah, right. <laughs> they want nobody to have nothing over you. Mm -hmm. You drink hot. <laughs> Child. His mood since the range from defiant to furious to frustrated. I want to bring out Ron Crane, the former chief of staff. I don't have one bill that's set too long, and then you try to go and drink it up. And Mike Shilson, political commentator and former chief of staff, to rank Priebus at the RNC, and Peter Wayne. I went to a day that had people. And it's in Trump. Who worked in the last three Republican administrations. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm so glad to have you all on. Peter, I want to start with you because the New York Times just republished just published another article. That's a drink of the end. <laughs> with the Russian lawyer, and I want to read a bit of it and get your response. It says also the screen. Time is for good right now to lean back. Uh, kind of talk. The nature of the June meeting. He met with Mr. Trump to discuss the issue around the time of the 
It's starting to taste burnt now. <laughs> when I get food, it's starting to taste in front of y'all. I'm gonna get another glass of this and wash this stuff down. And I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna get off this thing. This is bad, but this is how you do it. I'll talk to you beautiful people later. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.